<laughs> pay attention. I, you know, I did realize I'd never introduce myself. Like, I go up here, I'm like, hey, let's get going. People are like, who the hell is that? And I'll meet people like a year later, like, oh, you're that guy that was on stage. <laughs> yeah, this is why you professionally introduce conferences. Uh, hi, yeah, my name is Bruce Potter. Hi, Bruce. Hi. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I am A, and y'all can fill in the blanks. That's totally cool. Um, so uh, we're going to kick things off. Uh, I'm going to try to cover a lot of ground about what's going on in the con, uh, what's going on around the con, and a few other odds and ends. Um, the real talks will start sharp at um, when, you're done. when I'm done, but I will try to have that at 3.30. So uh, someone made these really fancy cards, and I actually know when talks are now, which I think is cool, because um, normally I have no clue. People are like, hey, when's this talk? I'm like, today? <laughs> like, what room? One of them. Um, anyway, so if you haven't figured out, your badge is a piece of uh, a puzzle. And when you put all the badges together, it looks like that on the screen. Uh, point over there, it's the same thing over there too, right? You just, people are actually looking in both directions. Um, and so it's obviously reminiscent of Dark Side of the Moon. So um, we took all the badges and we framed them and it's got the front and the back. And this uh, fantastic piece of framed art will be up for auction at the HFC booth down in the chill-out room. So uh, obviously all proceeds go to the HFC. So if you want uh, 18 badges to get you into the con at the end of the con, uh, <laughs> please go down and, um, and uh, put in a bid on their auction. So uh, yay, HFC. Yep. So, what? <laughs> Does it come with a lanyard? Yeah, it's a big flavor flave lanyard. It's a big gold chain. I will fashion up a lanyard out of gaff tape for someone, whoever wins it, it'll, it'll be wonderful. Um, so what a lot of people don't know is um, uh, I do most of the graphic arts, like the actual work. Heidi comes up with the ideas for a lot of it, but I actually use Illustrator and Photoshop and do it. Um, and the original badge was um, a play on the um, Green Day Dookie cover, complete with like a flying moose and everything. It was. It was pretty badass. Um, and, and the problem was, when I showed it to people, people that were older than I was had no idea. Like, what the hell is a green day? And, I'm like, <laughs> and, and then I have a lot of younger people saying, isn't that an album cover? When they look at this thing, they're like, who sang that song? Like, what was the name of that? And like, it's Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Like, oh yeah. So it's dangerous to play the rock game. Um, also, if you look at your lanyard, there's a bunch of like famous rock fonts on there. Um, I think I remember what they all are. So, you know, if you get bored in a talk, you can try to figure out who, what bands all those fonts belong to and that kind of thing. Uh, they're all fully licensed fonts. Uh. <laughs> Anyway, if you find somebody from the labs, they actually have the Green Day album cover. You can take a look at that and tell me if you think that was a better bet or not. What, oh, it, and Ted's here. Ted, are you filming? Okay, I didn't even ask. Are we streaming too? Are we hot? We're having, am I not loud enough? Because I can be louder. I can, I can overdrive everything. Um, a few other stories, as long as I'm up here, because I can't not get on stage and not tell stories. Um, so the swag bags. Uh, the bag's pretty cool this year. I think there was some pretty good stuff in there. Uh, we brought the cooler back, uh, which I know there were a lot of people asking for the coolers for the last few years. So uh, the coolers are back. And so what happens with the bags is the Wednesday before the con, people show up at our house, and uh, the bags have been delivered to my house via freight. So a truck pulls up and drops skids of frickin' uh, boxes in my garage. And all the other stuff from all the vendors gets delivered. And then we buy hundreds of dollars of liquor and hundreds of dollars of food and convince people to come stand around folding tables for hours and shove shit in bags and pass it to the next person and shove it. And then bags go out in boxes out in this giant truck that's in my front yard. My yard gets torn to shit. My floors are all destroyed. It's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> But things get a little weird at times because all you're doing is picking up a handful of crap and throwing it in a bag and then you're having these conversations which just gets strange. Um, and whatever's in front of you, you put in the bag. So uh, one thing that we bought this year early uh, when we went to Ikea, there were these little uh, yellow, two years ago, little yellow stuffed moose that we bought at Ikea that we've been storing in a bag for like forever. And so halfway through the process, I said, I put it down in front of someone and I said, put these damn moose in the bags. And then they said, what do you do with the bag? He said, put the bag in the bags. So I'm wondering, did anyone get an Ikea bag in their bag? It's a big blue bag. It's one of the big Ikea shopping bags. If you did, it's yours to keep. 
Uh, I don't want it back. There are other surprises in various bags, so be sure you inspect your bag very well. Um, but a lot of you actually got these little IKEA moose just because we were sick of storing them. Um, also, I, I, for the Hack Fortress stuff, um, we're using an Oculus Rift for some of the Hack Fortress things, and if anyone's used them, they can be very disorienting. So I asked on Twitter, hey, anyone that's flying in, can you grab barf bags? Um, I got a lot of barf bags. <laughs> some of them used. Um, not, not with barf, but you know, with other stuff. And I was like, oh, th that makes it okay. Like, <laughs> Um, and, and then finally, uh, all the vendors drop stuff off or have it shipped to our house to put the stuff in, into the bags, and one of the vendors shipped an open box of stuff. Actually, they didn't ship it, they dropped it off, dro dropped it off at our house. And the top, there's no top to it, and it was all these little envelopes, it was Fortigo's little thingies. Um, and so, I'm sitting there making breakfast one morning, it must have been like Monday or Tuesday, so it's right before bag stuffing, and I hear my cat, I'm like, Oh shit, I go run it, and right as I walk in the room, blah, the cat throws up in the open box of Fortigo stuff. I told him, I told him. I was like, oh shit. And so, you know, and they're just like manila envelopes. You see them in your bag, there's manila envelopes. And so now there's a bunch of manila envelopes with cat puke. And I'm like, I need to play a game of operation because the more of these I ruin, the more I'm going to have to fix and like recreate because I'm not as nasty a person as I am, I'm not going to give you envelopes that my cat has puked on. So for the next 20 minutes, I'm pulling out envelopes and then like, it's like a game of Jenga and then like a pile of the top envelopes would fall and cat puke would land on more things. I'm like, oh God, and like pulling it all out. In the end, I, about 30 some odd got ruined. So that was actually a lot better than it could have been. So no one got cat puke this year. Just, you're welcome. <laughs> damn, damn it, Jim. For you next year. I, never mind. Um, <laughs> so we get this question a lot, um, what is Schmookon? And it's interesting because, um, you know, we're kind of popular, it's weird. Um, tickets sell out rapidly, it's kind of a joke. You're like, oh yeah, F5 day, ha ha ha, it's cute. Um, and then we run into people in the industry, they're like, what the hell is Schmookon? And it's interesting, like you either kind of heard of it and you want to go to it or you've been to it or whatever, or you have no idea. You know, and we particularly get this from like higher level execs and companies and stuff. They've heard of RSA and Black Hat and DEF CON and, you know, things like DerbyCon, even other regional conferences and whatever. And ShmooCon is kind of this weird, what the hell is it? Um, and so the, the answer can be complex, you know, because it's difficult at times to put a box around this. So what I'm going to go over next is really um, some of the old hat of what ShmooCon is and, you know, was and still is. And then a bunch of new stuff that we're doing this, this year uh, to make ShmooCon even cooler. So. Uh, first, we still have talks. I know, it's kind of retro, but we, yeah. <laughs> the, the head of the CFP committee is applauding. Um, so <laughs> it's the same format as last year. We honestly, um, uh, I think we have a lot of success with this with Friday doing the plenary sessions, short talks, um, and then, um, sir, with the uh, program, my wife is on stage trying to make a spectacle. Um, what am I pointing at? You'll see. Oh, right, where the things are. Um, <laughs> All, all the things. So uh, then we have, uh, we brought back, we got rid of Break It as a track last year and the uh, response was overwhelmingly positive. There are a lot of places you can go to find out where to break shit. It's not hard in this industry. Everyone wants to talk about breaking things. That's cool. We want to talk about fixing them. We want to talk about making a difference. Not that breaking things doesn't make a difference. You can give me as much shit as you want about that, but there's lots of venues for that. And we're choosing not to participate in that. Yeah, there's still some talks that talk about breaking things, but those ones that were accepted have kind of general purpose applicability and can serve as lessons for other arenas. That's why they were accepted. So uh, we have Build It, Belay It, and Bring It On. Uh, this will be the Bring It On track. Uh, which historically has actually been the little tiny room, uh, but this year uh, the Bring It On track was, was pretty good and we gave it this room. Uh, build It is that way, and Break or Belay It is all the way over there. So um, it's, we're like a big football here. If you look at your thing, it looks like two footballs. Sports! Um, <laughs> for, for the Twitter people. Um, so uh, Belay It's over there. We don't have access to that room right now, but we'll have it set up by the morning and we'll be uh, rocking and rolling. So. Um, and then Sunday, uh, we'll have three tracks in the morning, and then we'll be in here for the final uh, closing plenary, and then we'll uh, do the closing ceremonies in here as well. So for those that don't know, um, we run the network as kind of a commune uh, where we encourage attendees to apply to take part in what we call ShmooCon Labs. So we decided a long time ago we don't want to do formal training 
because training is expensive. Uh, you know, it's hard to get trainers to come in here and give training for free or super cheap when they can make, you know, $2,000 a head for two or three days of training. So um, instead, we have a hands-on thing where uh, people can come in, they can sit down with industry experts and switching and routing and Wi-Fi and uh, visualization and, uh, you know, uh, detection, things of that nature, and learn from people hands-on while they build the con network. And our goal has always been to build the most ridiculously overscaled, oversized con network with all the things that you would see in an enterprise environment environment, build it in 36 hours, run it for three days, and then tear it all down and pretend it didn't happen. Uh, which is kind of a lofty goal, but they, the labs guys and gals do a great uh, job with that every year. So there's been 30-ish people, uh, plus the leads that have been here since yesterday morning, getting everything set up. You see the access points are all sitting around the room. They're configured and, and ready to rock. We bought these fancy light stands to put the APs on. So there's like 14 APs in this room already. Um, there's three networks that you can play with. I won't bore you. This is all in the program. But is it all, it, Branson, it's all hot right now. Works. Everything's up and running, so the con's hot and the network's hot. Uh, I encourage you, the labs are all the way down at the end of the hall. They have visualization running down there. You pop your head in, ask questions, whatever. If it sounds interesting to you, apply for next year. We charge you 50 bucks, and that basically covers a t-shirt and some swag um, and insurance on your head, so if you get hurt, that we don't lose our house. So uh, it's really easy. Um, Hack Fortress, uh, I mentioned this for those that don't know, it's hacking in TF2 in 30 minute rounds. Um, there's all kinds of cool uh, hack puzzles that you have to solve. You get to play TF2 if you don't want to hack. And some poor soul from each team for each round will start out wearing an Oculus Rift. So um, uh, how many people have ever used them? Has anyone actually barfed using one yet? One hand. Um, <laughs> I used one for, for those that don't know, it's a VR headset, right? And uh, all, a lot of the source games support it. Uh, I put one on and played for 20 minutes, and then I spent an hour sitting very quietly on my couch trying not to barf. <laughs> so your inner ear and your eye do not agree, and when they're arguing, I've found it's best just to sit it out. Just, <laughs> just wait. Um, Ghost in the Shell Code, so Ghost in the Shell Code is back again. So this is uh, our CTF that, uh, uh, well, they, they run it, but we, we host it here for them. So um, it's a fantastic CTF uh, setup that they've had. They've grown it uh, dramatically over the years. Uh, again, you can go, they've had qualifiers and stuff, but you can still sit down and play uh, if you like. They have a 3D game environment this year, which uh, apparently is pretty cool. They said it's, they spent a lot of time doing it, so there should be some pretty neat gaming challenges and stuff too. Uh, so I encourage you to stop by the Ghost in the Shell Code. Uh, uh, you know, it's, again, they have all kinds of cool stuff to show off their visualizations of what's going on, that kind of thing. So you can go to the Gits room to register or ask questions. Um, that's also down the hall. If you haven't noticed, we're in the football, and I keep pointing that way. If you go past registration down the hall, there's a whole set of rooms down there where all these contests are. There's more vendors down there and all kinds of stuff. So don't think that this is the only place where stuff is happening. Um, Something that's unique to ShmooCon, uh, and uh, we started doing last year, uh, it was proposed to us, and, and we were very happy to help facilitate it, is this idea of trainer exchange. So this isn't actually uh, training people, this is training trainers. Uh, so the idea here is there's a lot of people who get up on stages and try to educate people about various things from penetration testing to securely configuring whatever to you know all kinds of different things. Um, but oftentimes those people are kind of groping in the dark trying to figure out what their course material should look like and what other people are doing and that kind of thing. Um, so the uh, um, uh, open, open security training, damn it, I can't remember their, what? Dot info. info. I had it right? Open security training dot info? Wow, look at the big brain on Brad. Um, Frickin' Pulp Fiction reference, like eight people laughed. Um, so <laughs> anyway, um, if you go down the hall, uh, uh, there's a schedule, in your, or a schedule in the program that talks all about it. It's really an interesting concept, right? It's trying to get people who do training professionally or thinking about doing training, giving them free resources, giving them curriculum, giving them material, and trying to help raise the bar about what we're doing when we educate people coming into the industry. Um, you know, we feel that's pretty important. We're really happy uh, that, that the open security uh, um, uh, training folks have, uh, have you know, formed and are coming here to do this. You know, we couldn't be happier about it. So uh, please, if you do any kind of training, stop by, get an idea of what they're about, you know, attend some of their seminars, um, and we're happy to get feedback from everybody if it's possible. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Lockpick Village. Yeah, Lockpick Village is back uh, year after year after year. They keep coming back, and year after year after year, they keep rocking it out. So uh, Tool runs our Lockpick Village. They do a fantastic job. I'm sure a lot of you have been. Has anyone here not picked a lock before? 
It's okay, you can raise your hand. It is uh, an amazingly satisfying experience. Um, it's strange. Like, you can do a lot of things in the security space, but there's two things that usually get people to go, woohoo! And one of them is picking a lock, and the other is popping a box. Uh, you know, the first time you get a remote shell, you're like, hey, I'm on the box, and I'm domain admin, woohoo! Um, I'll make that noise alive. Poke me in the belly, that's, um, Challenge said, thank you. You've just been looking for a reason. Oh, now I have an excuse to poke him. Um, so anyway, uh, stop by Lockpick Village. Uh, they're more than happy to teach you all about physical security, fantastic challenges. Uh, is there a, a game this year? No? No black bag or anything like that? OK. There's no game, but there's a game tomorrow. Is that what I heard? Yeah, OK, good. <laughs> um, so a word about our sponsors. So we have sponsors, right? I mean, it's the, it's the truth. Um, and this is something that, that we kicked around actually a long time ago with ShmooCon, like did we want corporate sponsorship? Because there's things that come along with corporate sponsorship that's kind of like an anchor. You know, you have to, you know, sometimes you have to kind of keep yourself in check or, you know, do things that aren't gonna upset your sponsors or whatever. But in general, I think we've been uh, very lucky to have good sponsors that are just happy to be here and they really don't care what we get up on stage and say or anything like that. And we've had any material we wanted and have had no pushback from sponsors over the years. The thing about the companies that are in that hallway is that companies like that provide the goods and services that we use every day to do our jobs. And you can bitch and complain about, you know, uh, you know sponsors at, at conferences and all that kind of stuff. But the fact of the matter is we need to make friends. If we have problems with their products, we need to tell them, right? I don't like this. I don't use it because of X, you know? It, it's insecure, it's unusable, the interface sucks, whatever it is. Have the conversation. You know, that's one of the reasons that they're here. They're also trying to recruit you, so. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, we also try to encourage our sponsors to actively engage. So there's a lot of games there. Uh, you know, the, the, a lot of these sponsors will come to ShmooCon with a very different setup than they would go to a normal event. You know, they bring games. There's, you know, f all kinds of stuff out there. So go talk to the sponsors. You know, take their swag, hear their sh uh, their shtick, and provide feedback if you can. Uh, T-shirt charities. So uh, we sell T-shirts, kind of. Uh, there's three t-shirts designs this year. Uh, you can go into registration starting at five? Five o'clock. You can go into registration and start buying them. The catch is uh, we provide the shirts, but we don't get the money. Uh, you take a, you give us 15 bucks, you get a little chip, and then you decide if you want EFF or HFC to get your money. You put the chip in the little bucket, and then at the end of the event, we figure out who got what amount of money, and then they get the cash, and we don't. So uh, we provide the shirts as basically a donation to the community, and then you basically donate to one of those two uh, causes. So um, five o'clock, uh, you can go in there and start buying shirts. I know it says four. I know. There's a lot of things. We're just, I'm glad you're paying, thank you, sir. I'm glad you're paying attention. <laughs> Did you? I did. Oh, okay. Well, apparently, I was just wrong. It's five o'clock. So um, registration started at twelve thirty. How'd that work out for the people that registered at noon? I mean, that was exactly. Hey, we 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 keep threatening to do that for ticket sales one year. Be like, just light it up at like eleven thirty. It'd just be like, <laughs> whatever. Like people will start hitting refresh at eleven fifty. Be like, oh shit. <laughs> so that's a joke, by the way. <laughs> Yeah. Please, God, don't. Um, that, there, there's a slide on that. Okay. Um, there's, well, that's, that's something. Okay, we'll do that later. Okay. Uh, other contests. Schmookenography is back. Um, it may or may not involve the giant Stargate that's down the hallway. There's a giant Stargate. Like, I swear to God, it's, if you go down the hallway, there's like a, like, raw is going to come out of it, and bad acting will follow. Um, <laughs> Hey, yeah, the one, one Stargate fan. Dude, there was some shitty acting in that show. The movie was okay, and the show just <laughs> terrible. Um, MacGyver, but MacGyver went through the Stargate. I mean, come on. We're getting some weird Stargate trivia, so I'm just gonna keep on keep on pushing. Um, barcode, smartcode. Um, so, barcode, smartcode. For those that don't know, is a contest. Uh, that the DC 949 guy started and has now been picked up by unallocated. What? Oh, right. So it was weird. Like they showed up with their barcode, like printed out some fancy way, thinking that there was a contest that to like how cool you can make your barcode. And we're like, 
what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and they're like, okay, can we do it as a contest next year? We're like, sure, you're like, knock yourself out. So um, barcode smartcode is basically a contest to see who can make the coolest barcode. Uh, I contend, no offense to all the other entries, uh, Adrian Crenshaw has the b most badass freaking barcode entry ever. Um, he had a laser that he would shine at the barcode scanner from across the room, and when they pulled the trigger, he would fire his laser, and it would provide the b bounce back to the laser scanner as if it was scanning the code, and beep, it would scan the barcode. It was insanity. Like, he explained it to me several times. I did not understand it. So, um, so a Adrian, uh, I, I don't know if he's barred from participating or something, or they just tie his hands down. Um, but Unallocated's running it. It's right next to um, uh, the registration door. So if you haven't made a cool barcode, you, there's still time. You could, I don't know, do something. I encourage, your hotel room, I'm sure, is full of things that you could turn into a barcode for, for a cost. I think it's a little thing they put in the bathroom. Like, if you want to take the uh, uh, towels and turn them into a barcode, that'll be $40. Um, Winners of everything will be announced at the end of the con in the chaos that is known as closing ceremonies. Uh, there will be, uh, I, I, will, I will go on a limb and say there will be 100% less chandelier breakage this year. <laughs> if for no other reason that there's no chandelier in this room. There is probably a multi-ton light bar though. <laughs> and we're gonna try avoiding taking that down, so. Um, there was there was um, there, there was some there was an issue last year. We'll just leave it <laughs> leave it at that. Um, we also do Rochambeau uh, and to give away a bunch of stuff. So bring you know you got to get warmed up ahead of time. We do the world record for like the largest Rochambeau tournament is something stupid like 800 people. And we, can never and, we and we but we don't have a Guinness rep to to tell tell us you know that we won. Um, and everyone would have to give their name, too. But I, I'm convinced that we actually have the world's largest Rochambeau tournament every year when we do this. But, you know, nobody wants to say their real name, so we can't get credit for it. So, um, Fire Talks. So uh, Fire Talks uh, is basically kind of an um, after-hours, 15-minute rapid-fire presentation of lots of cool topics. So uh, Fire Talks has a separate CFP than, than what we have. The only requirement is that you're a ShmooCon attendee. And uh, they have a great lineup this year. It'll be Friday tonight in this room after the keynote, and then Saturday it'll be in the build it room. Build it? That way? That, that way. <laughs> Shit. Uh, <laughs> look for the signs. Uh, no one's gonna remember. Like, you're gonna walk out of here and be like, where the hell am I? Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, speaking of the program, best program ever? <laughs> no? <laughs> Heidi says no. Um, I did the moose on the cover. That was the most complex piece of art I've ever done in my life. Heidi says, you gotta do the cover for this. I'm like, no, no. I'll do like art for the schmoo wall. That's one color. It's like this big, that's easy. It's like, no, and I pulled that one onto my ass. So, um, the, it's an ass moose. <laughs> Anyone wanna do the ass penny skit from uh, Kids in the Hall or whatever? <laughs> that is one of the most classic pieces of comedy ever. God bless the Canadians. Um, so <laughs> there's, there's new stuff on the cover. Um, everything on the cover is new, and I want to talk about that next. I'm going to spend a little bit of time there. So uh, first off, the Saturday Night Party. Um, we are done going off site. There is a very large number of ways that nightclub owners can commit fraud. We have found almost all of them empirically. It's been... <laughs> Good research, yes, yes. I'm getting my master's thesis in it, actually, if anyone would like to review it. Um, it I mean, last year was just off the rails. I, I, I don't get angry very often, but last year, like, I was, I was upset. When people fuck with our attendees, I want to, I want to do bad things. And so um, it, it was not pleasant. So we decided we're done, uh, we're gonna stay here. Um, and, and there's a number of issues that we're, we're avoiding now. You know, under 21, you know, you can't get into a nightclub. You gotta leave, you gotta come home. Oh. So what was the year when we were at that nightclub in East DC and like the closest road was like New York Avenue and it was like eight blocks away and it was eight degrees outside? It was terrible. God damn, we were off in like the Netherlands, and I remember I was one of the first people to leave, and I walked outside, and I don't see any cars at all. Like, not even people showing up to the nightclub. I'm like, oh, we're all gonna die. Like, <laughs> and like everyone starts walking out, the girls all got skirts on, and they're like, oh, oh my god, it's cold. I'm like, 
jackets on all of them. Like, whatever we have to do to just save lives, people. Uh, <laughs> everyone made it back okay. That might have just been me. That might. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, we're done with that. So this year, uh, we brought Paul and Storm to actually put on a show. So, um, yeah, for those that don't know, you should be applauding too. So, um, Paul and Storm, for those that don't know, uh, is comedy and music and frivolity. They put on a great show. Uh, it's really entertaining nerd humor and music and whatever. And even if you've never seen them, other people that have seen them 50 times will be doing things like throwing panties at the stage and stuff. And you're welcome to partake in that if you so choose. But I would encourage you to prepare ahead of time, not disrobe then re-robe and then throw the panties, because that's obvious that you weren't prepared. Um, and illegal, but. Um, <laughs> it'll start at 8.30 sharp in this room, so um, it's a show, so I would encourage you to get here at the start, because you'll actually miss jokes as things go along, and it won't be as funny for you if you aren't there in the beginning, so if you want to see Paul and Shorm, uh, they, they do sing. They sing a lot. They sing a lot, but it's like, it's like us, but funny. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and with music, so. But otherwise, it's just the same. Uh, Paul. What? Loose ball. Loose ball? Who's Paul? Who's Paul and Storm? Not either of us. I don't want to claim. What? Okay, anyway. Um, so here's the deal. All ages are welcome. Uh, so if you're under 21, come on in. It's cool. Uh, you can be here all night long. Uh, we are covering uh, all beer, all wine, and all sodas uh, for everyone. Yes. There's a limited selection so that you don't totally burn down the bank account. Um, and then on Saturday, there will be some system of distributing drink tickets to people at registration for mixed drinks if you want to partake in that. Because once you start to get to mixed drinks land, then the potential budget astronaut, it just goes crazy. So, um, but we're covering all beer, wine, and sodas. So that'll go on all night until 1 o'clock after Paul and Storm are done. Uh, Zach, uh, uh, Sec Barbie, and Keith will be spinning. Uh, there's a... Yay! Go with them. There's actually a dance floor. You can see it. It looks like my gym's high school uh, basketball court. Um, high school gym's basketball court. Did I screw up grammar? Yes. Damn it, grammar. Um, we also have fancy furniture and stuff in here. And, and I just want to preemptively thank the labs crew because all of the networking will need to be tore out of this room for Saturday night and then reconstituted in time for the talks on Sunday morning. Thank you. That may be a new requirement to them. Uh, OK, good, yes. Um, so a story. Um, once upon a time, DVD John cracked DVDs, and all was right with the world, except for the DMCA. Boo. Um, so when the DCSS case uh, happened, and there was all this shit back in 2000, for, for some of you, I realize 2000 is ancient history, and you may not have been on the internet. Um, I'm trying to summarize. I mean, I've been born, yes. <laughs> for some people in this room, it's actually true. Um, so um, during that case, there was a trial with uh, Emmanuel Goldstein and 2600 and some other defendants. Um, and I forget who the plaintiffs were, but it was like the motion MPAA and some other people, and the EFF represented them. So um, there, was a, there was a big to-do about that whole case because they, they, Emmanuel Goldstein lost, but then on appeal they were claiming you know, source code is free speech, um, and that part of it was upheld, and so that's actually a pretty important piece of history that came out of that case. Um, and during that whole time, I mean, I mean, anyone that participated, you know, you, you, you weren't supposed to post DCSS anywhere, so people were like having, you know, playing the song like singing all the code and stuff so like then the mp3 was illegal and you couldn't post that and stupid things like that um, and there were t-shirts see the t-shirt here I think I still have mine so the code was printed on the back and so everybody's walking around DEF CON with illegal code on their back and everything and you know it was um, it was a really interesting period in history well uh, time moved on and EFF had all these documents and they called up the grand uh, uh, universal archiver Jason Scott and, and they said and they said Jason do you want all these documents associated with the DCSS case? And he said, absolutely. And then time went on. Um, a year later, Jason's at his house, and he gets a knock on the door, and it's a UPS truck in the middle of a snowstorm saying, I have 88 boxes of legal documents here for you. Where do you want them? <laughs> he's like, I have no idea what this is. And he opens it up. He's like, holy shit, it's the DCSS stuff. So. Um, 
he uh, posted a, a plea online because his uh, trailer full of stuff to archive was full. Uh, Jason does actually have a trailer full of stuff to archive. Um, and it, was, it could not handle the pallets of this. And so uh, we volunteered and said, Jason, if you get it down here, we'll pay for the, uh, the truck and everything, and we'll store it, and we'll give it a good home. We'll try to find something to do with it. So we've been holding on to 88 boxes of all the documentation associated with DCSS. So this is testimony from Valenti, Emmanuel Goldstein's personal financial information, and everything in between. Um, I found the other day when I was leafing through it, there's archives of the livid dev mailing list. And as we're leafing through it, there's a whole bunch of stuff that looks like hex. And one of the guys says, oh, that must be DCSS. I said, no, this is Base64 encoded. It's a MIME attachment. And sure enough, it's pages of Base64 encoded stuff that was a PDF, like 50 freaking pages. <laughs> it's like, here's the user manual. Son of a bitch, what's the next post? A response that has, again, all 56 pages of the PDF. Son of a bitch. So there's some stuff in there that might not be that valuable, but there's lots of cool stuff in there as well. So um, anyway, what we're going to do, um, down in the chill out room on the back side, there is uh, five uh, workstations set up with scanners and Jason Scott. He's got the top hat. His name is Jason Scott. He's very easy to pick out. He's like 25 feet tall. Um, is he in the room? No, he's down doing his job. He's scanning. Um, if you and four of your friends say, I don't know what to do with myself right now, the answer is go to the scanning station, grab a beer. We don't provide the beer. You have to provide your own. Um, <laughs> boo. <laughs> really? We're giving you a free party. Like, you want a movie? Come on, bring it. Uh, so um, anyway, go down there and just flip through pages and help scan. Jason's going to kind of guide the whole process, figure out what's important, you know, kind of take a first cut. He was up till 12.30 last night just looking through them, figuring out what the really the first priority stuff was. And then from there, we're just going to try to get it all. So uh, please, please, please uh, take, take some time, go down there. We would really appreciate it because at some point, I like my storage unit back. It's where I spend my weekends, um, and it's really crowded there. So um, also, speaking of a storage unit, uh, we are selling bags of crap. A la Woots Bags of Crap. Thank you for applauding the bag of crap after I've been talking about cat food, because you're like, it may actually be crap. Uh, <laughs> the storage unit on one side had all the documents from DCSS, and the other is swag from every previous Shmoocon. And we said, shit, what do we do? So Heidi came up with the idea. We were going to shove them in bags, staple them shut. It wasn't, my idea. wasn't your idea. It was Laura's idea. OK, there was an idea. That's the important bit. Um, <laughs> We bought a bunch of bags. We had another party. You see a trend. People stub things into the bags. We stapled them, and now you can buy them for 10 bucks. Uh, inside the bags are definitely 10 bucks worth of stuff, and then some. They're on them, they'll be written a size, and that's the T-shirt size that's associated with it. Except some of them that are labeled large and not labeled women's may actually be indeed women's larges. <laughs> if you acquire said bag, I will leave it at your discretion. They are bags of crap as to what to do with a shirt. I have inadvertently worn women's shirts on multiple occasions, and on purpose several times. It's not that bad. Um, and the underwear all the time. So, yeah. So um, please stop by, spend 10 bucks. There's ice scrapers, there's schmoo balls, there's even cooler stuff than that. There's lots of water bottles, lots of t-shirts. There's at least, for the t-shirts, there's at least two in every one. -ish. Not necessarily. It, you get your. There are bottom of my firewall T-shirts in there. Yes. <laughs> Fuck you. I, I I do not love you. Uh, uh, another thing that we did. Um, that's on there too. Yes. What feedback? Okay. Um, it's an adventure up here on stage, I promise you. Um, another thing we did this year, so we, we, we talked about this last year, about what can we do to the, t the, the system to try to make it more fair. Um, and our contention was to make it more fair to the people who need to be here and learning, uh, which at its base are students, right? The children are future and all that kind of stuff. Um, in, in reality, um, there's a lot of very motivated uh, high school and college students who are trying to learn uh, on what's going on in this industry. They're trying to learn computer security. And it's tough because they're, you know, we, you all know, the, the curriculum in a lot of the colleges is still getting up to speed. Uh, my personal experience is most of the learning is happening outside of classrooms still. You know, you've got uh, student-run organizations like Sparsa at RIT and the IA Club at Penn State. Yeah, yeah. RIT and Penn State, baby, every year. Um, 
And, and that's where a lot of the real learning is happening, and so we wanted to be able to support that. So um, what we did is we opened up 30 slots for students to apply to, um, and, and to apply, they had a number of things they had to do. They had to tell us who they were, why they wanted to come to the con, um, and it was an open-ended question, because we certainly don't want to bias it to only students who have really done a lot of work. Because, you know, if you ask what have you done in computer security and you only give it to the people who have done a lot, you're biasing it to the seniors and whatever. Like, we want junior people to come in, too. So just, why do you want to come here? Just open-ended, tell us. Um, and then, you know, they had to have a recommendation from faculty. Um, you know, so to actually take some initiative, go to a teacher or something and say, hey, can you write a paragraph, email, it doesn't need to be on letterhead or anything. Or write their own and have, forge it, you know, SMTP, <laughs> hello from, you know, receipt to. Um, one, student to uh, one student had to create a student ID. That was cute. Um, one person just sent in a picture of chicken. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were like, oh, oh, okay, good, good, good job there, guy. Um, we, we needed photographic proof that they went to school. And we encouraged them, like, get a picture in front of a school building or the school mascot. Um, we, oh, will we? There was, um, there was a really fantastic picture that we're going to show at closing that um, I, I assume the young man is here. Um, he may wish to remain anonymous after he sees the picture. Um, I will say that one of my new hires that I hired at my company uh, was riding the Penn State Nittany Lion, um, but he was fully clothed, so I do give him credit for that. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, schmoozers, uh, people that wanted to help the students then, basically bought a ticket for 400 bucks. And what they did is at $150, they bought their own ticket, and $150, they bought the student's ticket, and then they threw in another $100 stipend on top of that. And at ShmooCon, we then threw in another $100. So every student who showed up uh, got a free ticket and $200 to help offset the cost of travel and room and board down here. So. <laughs> So we um, accepted 30 um, students, and 22 were able to make the trip. Uh, there were a few people that you know, applied, and then various things got in the way. The guy who sent chicken didn't make the cut. Um, <laughs> but it was, it, was a very, it was a huge success, um, and we're really happy to be able to do this. We're going to do it again. Um, and we wanted to thank all the schmoozers who ponied up money to, uh, to help them out. So a big round of applause for all these folks. <laughs> Uh, let's see, I got a few other odds and ends. Um, yeah, didn't I have something in there? Um, okay, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. Um, schedule change, the ACPI talk is canceled due to illness, unfortunately, um, she's not able to make it. Uh, so instead, uh, Nicholas Popovich will be giving I found a thing and you can, should, should to ISP's unauthenticated soap service, finding almost all the things. So uh, that, was, that was a big ass title. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's about looking for soap services in ISPs by some guy named Nicholas. So, um, and that'll be at? Uh, Saturday at 11. Saturday at 11. So the ACPEI talk is canceled, I'm sorry. So, but Nicholas will put on a good show, uh, I promise you. And you can ask him ACPEI questions just for fun um, and see what happens. Also, Sunday from 11 to 1, uh, I am the, uh, how do you pronounce it? Calvary. Calvary? Calvary? How many L's are in it? Because we hit put too many. Uh, did I put too many? Yes. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Well, well, it's in the wrong place, right? Or are there extras? Calvary and cavalry are two different things. Calvary is Jesus on the cross? Oh. Well, it is Sunday, so. 11 to 1. Jesus on the cross or Josh Corman? Your choice. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> no, it's on the website. When you go to the website, it, the URL is actually spelled wrong because he keeps poking us on, on the internet as opposed to somewhere else, FidoNet, you know. I keep posting disparaging things about you on FidoNet, but no one responds. <laughs> anyway, I am the Calvary. I am the whatever the hell it is. Um, is an effort to try to bring some sanity to the world and provide a, a, a little bit cleaner messaging about what uh, the information security industry is all about, uh, try to enact real positive change, um, in not just in our community, but outside our community where it really matters. Um, so Josh and I guess Banshee, you're nodding vigorously, you're involved in this as well? Run. Peripherally in involved. Jo Josh will be running this thing and, and uh, having a fantastic discussion. So I encourage you to show up uh, 11 to 1. That'll be in the room that the train the trainer stuff is in uh, down the hall, just that way. 
Uh, other contests, schmoganography, I think I mentioned. Okay. Uh, wireless CTF? I didn't mention that. Okay. okay, there's a wireless CTF. That's brand new this year. Woo, go, yay. Um, they've been doing that at DEF CON for a while, right? Yeah. So this is a new thing for us, but it's not new for a lot of people. They have a really cool CTF, um, and it's kind of bite-sized, manageable uh, kind of thing. So I'd encourage you, please, uh, go down, check out the wireless uh, CTF. You can obviously play from a lot of places, because, you know, it's wireless. Uh, but they're in the chill-out room, so if you want help getting started, they can help you out. Um, Usually I rant. I'm really not going to do much of it today because we actually are running long and people are already yawning. I saw that. Jeez. <laughs> that woman's going to trip me later. <laughs> um, I do want to talk about a couple other things really quick. Um, I've seen a lot of posts on Twitter. I, first of all, I clearly spend too much time on Twitter because I, I often benchmark my life about seeing things on Twitter and people like you obviously read all of Twitter. So, yeah. um, yes. <laughs> Um, you know, posts like this where, you know, hey, there's this video, and uh, basically it's a person typing in four command lines, but I made a 25-minute video about it. Ha, ha, ha. It's awesome because I have a camera, and you don't, apparently. Um, it's amazingly frustrating when you're trying to do research, you're trying to figure out how to do something, trying to figure out what's happened before, when all you're presented is a video, and you got slides that you can't see, and command lines that are incomprehensible, and, you know, it, it's not good for the community at large to try to learn from, right? It's very, it's a poor record of what we've done. Because people get on stage at these conferences and some of the work is pretty groundbreaking. But at the end of the day, it's like, oh, go download this, you know, frickin', um, you know, what's smaller than VGA? Like, you know, 320 by 100 pixel, you know, frickin' thing that you could stream over your phone. Good luck. Um, so what we tried to do and what, uh, what we are doing um, is the ShmooCon proceedings. So, uh, this is actually uh, going to be, you can buy it as a bound book when it's done. Um, we encouraged everybody who's uh, submitted a paper, or submitted a talk, to put together a thousand word paper. Um, and uh, James Arland has uh, been leading the charge on this, and he's done a great job of coming up with a template for everybody to use. The actual final product looks very professional. I've seen a lot of the final uh, um, uh, copy edited and, and ready for production uh, documents, and they look, it looks fantastic. Um, about 75% of the speakers said, yeah, um, my thing makes sense to put into a thousand word uh, paper, which is good for a first year to get three quarters of the people saying they would do it. Uh, the number of people who turned it in on time was, I'll say substantially lower than 75%. Uh, but that may be in the grand con tradition of it's not done yet uh, because it's not the time for me to get on stage because that's when most people finish their research. So um, <laughs> it's true. Uh, anyway, we expect a lot of the papers to be rolling in next week. Uh, at that point, we'll have a PDF online available for everyone to download. We actually have an ISBN number. We'll have uh, JIT uh, uh, production on books, so you can actually get a physical book um, and have it on your shelf if you so desire. Uh, this serves two purposes. One, it forces the people who get on stage and present their research to actually put together a cogent 1,000 words, um, which is <laughs> oftentimes what happens on stage isn't cogent. So. Um, and, and maybe they're sober when they write it as opposed to when they speak. So uh, it also gives us something citable and easier to reference and easier to build upon. Um, and we hope that other conferences would take this and do the same types of things. It's relatively inexpensive. We'll be happy to share the templates and the formats and everything that we did. And if anybody else wants to do this, please goddamn do it. Um, and, and I keep saying, we, you know, we solicit your feedback. After you look at the proceedings or whatever, if it, you know, this is the first attempt. If you have any suggestions on ways to do it different, other questions to ask the authors, other ways to structure stuff, please, please, please let us know. Um, the wireless CTF. Look, I knew it was in there. God bless. Um, wireless CTF. There, we've done it. Video and picture policy. Ha <laughs> ha. We have video and picture policies. Um, for those that haven't been to a conference that has a picture policy, uh, we take it pretty seriously, so I encourage you to listen. I imagine most of you have devices in your pockets that have cameras. People look around, me? Um, you are welcome to take pictures um, outside in the halls and in the hotel and whatever else. We only ask that everyone in frame consents to the picture. Okay? If you get up on stage and you snap a shot of everyone just because you want something to post to Instagram, we're going to tell you not to do it, we're going to ask you to delete it, and if you do it again, we're going to ask you to leave. Um, there are people that are here uh, that don't want to be photographed for whatever reason. I don't care. Why do you use encryption? I don't care. Right? 
People want their privacy, and we're going to try to respect it here. So snap photos all you want, share them with whoever the hell you want, just make sure everybody in frame agrees that they can have their picture taken. Cool? Yeah. Cool. Uh, it's old school, man. I mean, there aren't many. CCC does it. Um, I don't know if many other conferences do it anymore, uh, but we, we carry the torch. We're pretty serious about it. Uh, you can wear your Google Glass. I don't give a shit. Um, I own them. Um, and my opinion, frankly, they're no different than your cell phone. Uh, but if you start saying, class, take a picture, and you, know, you clearly haven't gotten uh, acceptance from everybody in the frame, we'll treat you just like a cell phone or a big DSLR or whatever. So um, on the same token, like if you're actually doing something useful with your glass, God help you, please talk to me, because I can't figure out what the fuck the thing does. <laughs> Um, we're streaming all the talks. That F-bomb just went out to the internet. Um, we're streaming all the talks. Uh, Ted's burning them down to DVDs. You can buy them right now for 10 bucks uh, at Ted's table. Go, Ted. <laughs> Ted drives out here from California with all his gear. It's awesome. Ted, are you in the room still? Ted, do you still have the cruise control stick? Do you have the cruise control stick? Okay. Ted showed up at the con one year and he's got a stick and he's like, check this out, it's got notches for 55, 65, and 75. <laughs> Sets it underneath his dashboard and then he drives. <laughs> Ted gets here like a day. <laughs> so Ted, Ted has been a friend of the community for a long time and we appreciate all the effort he puts in uh, to doing it. So please support Ted. He also gives us all this video royalty free at the end. We share it all online. Um, and oh, and I'm, I'm going to say this here. We post all the videos on our own servers um, because I felt, uh, and some of us others did, pretty passionately about not providing the, the videos through, you know, a flash-based service and giving it all to Google, no offense Google employees, uh, you know, I just, it, we gave us more control. But at the end of the day, we keep ripping it bigger and bigger and bigger frickin' formats and it takes down gigs and gigs and gigs. The other day someone was snarfing down our connection off of what I assume is a gigabit connection on the other end and our load balancer, God bless the load balancer, it was trying to cache everything. Um, so each of these videos is like half a gig and there were like 20 concurrent connections. So it would be like, let me get all those for you. Oh, I'm out of swap. Crash, come back up. Let me get all those for you. Whoop, oh, I'm out of swap. What the fuck? Um, so this is four days before the con. And so, and, and the load balancer kept dying. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I finally figured it out. And so I solved the problem uh, by uh, uh, Chamad 000 for all the videos. Um, so, what will? The, the IP, 41, something or other, I don't know. It's well, not like I'm going to call him. Honey's like, who is it? I'm like, I don't know. It's not like there's, where's the header with the contact information? Um, he didn't have the evil bit flipped. He must not have been doing anything bad. So um, I think at some point we're going to have to acknowledge the fact that either we're going to grow up about how we're serving these things or we're going to go put them in the cloud and let other people serve them. So, really? <laughs> Who did that? You're not welcome. God damn it. Archive.org. Okay. Archive.org, yes. Actually, maybe we'll talk to Jason and see what we can do. If they can get the link right next to the Grateful Dead songs, I'm totally cool with that. I went to the bathroom here, and they were playing The Wheel by the Dead, in the bathroom is bathroom music, and I was angry about it. Like, no, 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 the Grateful Dead is not bathroom music. God damn it. What? Oh! Podium's kind of heavy, but if you could come up here, I'm just going to drop it on you. <laughs> my Twitter handle's GDead. I have a giant steal your face on my shoulder. I had the farthest north Grateful Dead hour uh, at Fairbanks, Alaska. How many people, oh, I forgot to ask. How many people have attended the University of Alaska Fairbanks? How many people, <laughs> how many people have graduated from the University of Alaska Fairbanks? You did, sir, seriously? You're the first person that's ever I talked to. <laughs> I've been waiting years to find a UAF graduate. The last one I found was at a Pep Boys in Glen Burnie, Maryland, and he was crying into his phone because he lost all his weed when his car got totaled. <laughs> um, so, Jesus. I'm way off the rails here. Um, this is the best, yeah, exactly. So a few other warnings. Um, 
read the attendee info in the program. Uh, there's other stuff in there. Uh, you have to wear your badge at all times. Um, and I understand we all like to hack stuff. We all like to prove that we can do silly things. Please, 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 please don't fuck with the hotels, uh, any, any of the hotel staff, the hotel equipment. Uh, we are astronomically lucky to run an event like this in a venue like this, right? You, you pay 150 bucks to be one of the nicest hotels in DC that can accommodate 2,000 people. There aren't many of them. We can go to the convention center, because that doesn't suck too much, right? <laughs> like, you been to the DC convention center? No, it's not, it's not a nice plate, and no offense to any convention center employees, um, <laughs> but it's kind of a dump. Um, we want to keep coming back to nice hotels, and so far we've been doing this for 10 years, and we don't have a bad rep, and we like to maintain it. So we have a lot of security staff running around. If they see you doing something stupid, they're going to ask you to stop. If you don't, we're going to ask you to leave. Uh, it's very simple. So uh, we mean it. Also, please be nice to each other. Don't be assholes to each other. Again, uh, we have pretty much our, our behavior policy is don't be an asshole. If you're an asshole, we're going to ask you to leave. We usually don't ask people to leave. Most people left on their own, sometimes barfing into bags as the EMTs have picked them up. That's been the m biggest cause of leaving the con. Um, <laughs> and us apologizing to the hotel, and the hotel saying, no, it's okay, we had the trash can, it's fine. <laughs> Just, we don't want it back. Um, uh, key staff, uh, so Heidi uh, is, where the hell'd she go? What are you doing? <laughs> what? You're sitting, there's a chair. All right. I watched a fish called Wanda the other day. Uh, what the hell is that guy? I fucking love that scene. <laughs> That's not. Woo, that got weird. Um, ask other people questions first before you ask Heidi. She's got a thousand things to do, so please try not to bother her uh, too much. If it's really an emergency, though, you can grab her. Um, can, what? Don't grab her. Just talk to her. Uh, can, <laughs> Ken and Louise are running the network, but if you see any labs folks, they can help you out with network-related stuff. Uh, GM1 and Red Beer, the security leads, are you guys in the room? Nope. nope. Oh, they're working. Oh, good. Perfect. That, that was a straight answer. Um, you'll note that all our staff wear staff shirts. There's no security versus staff, um, and that's because we encourage all our staff to be helpful to you if you need something. If they're not the right person, they will help find the person who can answer your questions. So if you have questions, you know, feel free to track down anyone. Else? Sure. What? I don't have a staff shirt. Well, she doesn't, have a, she doesn't have a staff shirt, but she's got a staff hoodie, which is a fairly minor distinction when it comes to clothing. It's not like you're wearing a staff thong. Um, you, you know that story you know I was talking about? You can come visit me later. Is my phone ringing or are people texting me? Because if you're texting me and you're here in the room, um, uh, wow, okay, yes. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, Bob handles all the projectors and sound, so there's Bob if you uh, are a speaker and you have questions, you can talk to him. Tamsin's in registration doing registration. Oliver is in the back helping out with streaming video. Streaming video guys will be in the middle of the room next to Ted's gear if you have issues with streaming or if somebody says, you know, what the hell happened to streaming like on Twitter or something, you see it, you can let them know. We're monitoring it all the time, but um, you know, we're not uh, necessarily seeing uh, everything. Um, and me, you can always ask me questions. I actually have no responsibility at the con. Uh, after this is done, the next thing I do is close it down. So I'm a free agent. So if there's a problem you can't find anybody, you can find me and I'll run it to ground and we'll make it better for you. Uh, feedback. Um, so uh, every year we solicit feedback and we're pretty serious about trying to make sure that we at least listen and take it to heart and then uh, we try to make things better if we can. So uh, please go to feedback.schmoocon.org. It is up. It is up and functional. Um, you can provide feedback on anything. Every speaker, every you know, event, every whatever, you can go there um, and, and tell us what you think. Please, 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 please do. We're very open. Um, it does not require a barcode this year. In past years, it required you to, I don't know, draw a QR code on the screen or something. Um, you don't have to do that anymore. Uh, real quick, uh, the Shmoo Ball is back again, as you can see. So, uh, for those of you that don't know uh, what a Shmoo Ball is, allow me to explain very, very rapidly. Um, we're familiar with uh, uh, computers, right? There's a system. Uh, then there are potentially things that are trusted or untrusted input, like the uh, Zune installation software, which it says, uh, Zune setup package is not commonly downloaded and could harm your computer. <laughs> That was pretty ironic. Um, 
We don't necessarily trust this input. Uh, you know, anything that's one equals one minus minus, yeah, things are gonna go downhill for the, the far end of that. Uh, we don't trust this kind of input. Um, here's a USB stick, would you put it in your computer? Here's my finger, would you please? Um, so then there's systems like this, which is us. So I made sure it was clear, uh, this is a selfie, but I wanted to make sure you knew who was you and who wasn't you. Um, look, man, it was late last night. This is as good as the slide was getting. I just, a lot of shit happened. Um, Remember the bash attack this summer? Um, this Forbes article on the bash attack, which I think amounted to you could run bash on systems and do bad things with a command line. <laughs> dot, 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 yeah. <gasps> <laughs> wow, I get a directory listing of everything you say. Hmm. Hmm. Was that in Windows? Yes, it was. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, you know, there was the uh, hack on Dropbox the other day by 1775sec. Uh, Oops, just kidding. <laughs> Dropbox is under maintenance, but it's on Twitter, so everyone will say, hey, look, Dropbox got hacked. Dropbox is like, no, you're a bunch of morons who believe everything you read. Um, there's people on stage at conferences who will say random shit. You should not believe what they are telling you, right? Uh, this is actually really, that thing is not a, not a pimple, it's actually a schmooball uh, that someone caught in mid-flight right before it clocked me in the head. Um, it's a really good photo. Oh, you're welcome, that was Carson. All right. Oh, I should mention, there's two staff photographers we have, uh, Carson um, and uh, Dan. They follow, the same they follow the same rules as everybody else. They're not allowed to take pictures of you guys that you don't want to have taken and all that kind of stuff, but they do have very large cameras, like really big cameras. Um, anyway, um, I would encourage you when you're in the audience or when you're reading articles or uh, looking through papers or looking at our proceedings, ask yourself questions. You know, who is this person? What's their background? What's their motivation? What other work's been done in this space? Go through and just, you know, I think one of the most interesting things here is, you know, what feedback would I provide to the author, right? What could I tell this person that's different? What could I tell them that was useful, that they should think about, and that kind of thing? Um, I actually had kind of a, a large rant that I had, had put together uh, with uh, some feedback from some people in industry, um, and Adam and Crispin and uh, a guy named Jeff Foster, who uh, couldn't be here. Um, very helpful, but unfortunately I ran out of time, so I can't really go into it because I feel kind of bad that I wasted your time asking the questions. But um, when in doubt, the Shmoocon rule is when in doubt, you're asking yourself these questions, um, you can always uh, being the speaker with a shmoo ball. Um, Larry, who can't be with us, uh, has built several shmoo, shmoo ball cannons. This is one of them. Um, the one that he built uh, would fire 200 miles an hour and leave a bruise in your chest. <laughs> Empirical testing says so. Um, the whole purpose of this is if you disagree with a person on stage, you're welcome to throw this at the speaker. But be prepared to back it up. Uh, you know, it's hard to raise your hand and say, I disagree. But when the speaker says something outrageous and 50 schmoo balls come at him, the speaker needs to rethink his, you know, the situation. So um, we, we maybe are going to be arming some of the speakers with their own schmoo balls for retaliatory actions. Um, so be prepared to have the ball thrown back at you. I had wicked cat-like reflexes on the one, but that's probably the last I'm going to have. Um, we really, this is really just a physical manifestation of the bullshit flag, right? If, if you disagree, throw one, because there'll probably be 25 more coming along with it, because there are probably other people in the audience who disagree as well. So think critically, don't believe the people on stage just because they're up here. We had a great process this year with a number of really good talks, but until the rubber hits the road and the person gets on stage and starts presenting their research, we really don't know what's gonna happen. So um, stay on your toes. Uh, but please do not do, I think I'll get this to play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are actually, um, they, they will hurt and um, um, try, don't break anything up above, that's all I really have. Um, yeah, it's toss jelly, toss jelly. Anyway, uh, so that's it, that's the opening ceremonies. I'm going to shut down and we're going to let uh, Rob Fuller, who is not at all nervous about giving his talk, about, so we can actually say, yay Rob. Thank you very much. Look forward to this FUCON.